Hi, I'm Paul Feinberg, host of the UCLA Anderson Podcast. We're here today with Professor Judson Kasky, and we'll be talking about leverage. Professor Kasky, perhaps you could begin with just a simple explanation on what leverage is to get everybody on the same page. Sure. Uh, when we discuss leverage in the context of a corporation, it's how much debt do they employ in their mix of financing. Typical financing will either come from your shareholders, which would be equity financing, or debt, which could come from banks, corporate bonds, and so forth. Um, if I'm an investor, or if there are investors, what should in an investor know about leverage or a company's leverage when they're looking at a particular company? Uh, the typical view is that all else held equal, higher leverage is going to make the company more risky because uh, unlike equity, a bank has a fixed time schedule when you have to make payments to them. And if you don't make the payments, you end up in a situation of default. So all else equal, debt can make a company more risky. Um, and how about managers? What should managers know about uh, leverage or the leverage of a company? When a, man when a manager is considering leverage, they're considering what's the best way to obtain financing. Um, there are tax advantages to having debt. Uh, another advantage to debt is that you don't cede voting rights to bankers. So, for example, your shareholders can raise money via debt, and they don't give up any of their control of the company shares. Um, so between the inexpensive financing due to tax benefits and control benefits, uh, corporate managers will tend to want to take on some debt to the extent that they can afford it. And going back to what investors should think of, they need to consider that leverage makes a company risky all else equal. But when a company's actually making its borrowing decisions, all else isn't equal. So the companies that tend to take on a lot of debt, it's because they can afford it. Perhaps they have high, stable cash flows coming in. So when you see a company that has a lot of debt, an investor should not think this company is riskier. They need to see how much debt does the company have relative to their capacity to bear debt. Is, is it in a particular stage in a company's lifetime when they're likely to uh, move from maybe taking on ec you know, equity investors to um, leverage investing? Uh, most likely the debt financing would come later in a company's life when it's generating stable cash. What a company wants to avoid is having a debt payment come due at a time when they don't have cash on hand. So if you think about an early stage firm, they're making investments in research, product development, advertising. They have lots of cash going out, not too much going in. So that's not a good time to be obligated to pay on a fixed schedule. So you've recently uh, written a paper um, about leverage. What were some of your findings uh, in that? Well, the, the key issue that we look at in that paper is how much debt does a company have relative to their debt capacity? We use a tax-based measure of how much debt can a company afford and then compare that to how much debt does the company have. And then we look at the uh, correlation of this measure with uh, future stock returns. And we find that actually firms with high debt, which on the face might seem that they're riskier, actually are fairly low-risk firms with fairly low returns. But this is because the firms that are taking on the most debt are the firms with very high, stable cash flows. They're very low risk we find very high stock returns for firms that have uh, very little debt, but very high capacity to bear debt. So suppose you could afford to be making debt payments of $100 a month, but you only commit yourself to $2 a month debt. It's these firms that are having very high stock returns, and we find that there's some association with uh, future growth in that company's asset base, future growth in earnings. So perhaps in the future, these companies they don't have very much debt today, but then that has some option value because I've not used my debt capacity now in the future when it's time to grow my firm. Then I can start to unlock some of that debt capacity to grow the firm. And those firms actually tend to do quite well. Is there anything about today's current economic climate that uh, impacts um, companies seeking to take on debt um, given um, the state banks are in, the state of lending at, you know, at the current time? You know, this, the current economic environment highlights some of the ways in which debt can tie a company's hands. So I mentioned the bankruptcy risk earlier, that you're obligated to make payments. Well, a similar issue is that when you have debt payments coming due, companies will often not 
just simply pay down the debt, but they'll roll it over. So they'll pay, up, they'll pay down a, a large principal payment by borrowing again. And when you get into a credit environment like we have now, that's not such an easy task. And we see this, uh, for example, Caterpillar is a very solid company, and they had to roll over some debt, but they're paying a very high, they had to offer a very high interest rate in order to get takers for their debt. Um, and that's Caterpillar. If you look at some companies that are weaker, they may simply not be able to roll over their debt, and then you run into trouble. Because again, uh, with debt, you, it's not flexible like equity. Equ equity holders, they can wait to get their dividends. But debt, they do not wait. And so if you can't refinance in a, in a market like today, it can really tie a company's hands. And so that'd be another risk that uh, debt can put on a company. This gets again to the issue of that uh, debt can be good if the company's financially strong. They, can, they know they can make their debt payments. They know they can roll over debt. It's not a problem. Uh, for weaker companies, it can really hurt them. Thank you very much. You're welcome.